Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby with the, another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master looking at God's word. We began a journey on Monday talking about bitterness. We looked at what bitterness is, how bitterness enters into our heart, how it blocks the blessings of God in our life, how we focus on those things that are behind us and not on the things that are in front of us. Uh, we looked at bitterness from different angles and different perspectives. Now I'd like to close this series talking about how to address it, how to deal with it. The best way to deal with bitterness is not to let it get in your heart. But now that bitterness has become, and the writer of Hebrews puts it this way, Hebrews says, see to it that none of you fall short of the gifts of God, the grace of God, and that no bitter root grows up and causes trouble and defile many. Well, some of you might be saying, well, I should have had this teaching a year ago or two years ago, but it's too late because the bitterness has taken root. It's in my heart. It's in my mind. It saves my spirit. It saturates my mind and it is sabotaging my work. So it's already there. And not only has it, it is the root there, but the root has become a plant, a tree, a forest. And I am just consumed with bitterness. I really do have some bitter bitter issues, bitterness issues. How can I overcome it? Ephesians chapter four, verses 30 through 32 says this, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit wants to help you, but you cannot grieve the Holy Spirit of God by not allowing the Holy Spirit to help you with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of malice. Notice the first word is bitterness. It starts off with bitterness, and then because you don't deal with bitterness, bitterness produces the rest of the things that's on the list. Starts off with bitterness, now you've got rage. You go off. You lose it. It doesn't take much to make you go off. You lose it. And, and you lose it towards sometimes the people who have done nothing to you. Rage, anger, brawling, you want to always be combative and fighting, slander, you gossip, you try to hurt people, you get revenge and malice, you're just resentful. But it all started with bitterness, it rooted, it grew, it's a farce and it's out of control. You're not the person you used to do because the devil has you right where the devil wants you as a very bitter man or you are a very bitter woman and you cannot be a happy person and bitter at the same time. In fact, you can't be bitter and better. You either will be bitter or you will be better. But Paul says to the Christians at Ephesus, he says, get rid of it. Get rid of it. How do you do it? This is how you do it. First of all, you got to forget the problem. You got to ask God to help you forget what it was, the problem that made you bitter in the first place. And you do that by a conscious decision to do that. You do that by not allowing people to feed what happened, because sometimes people want you to be bitter because they know you cannot be better as long as you are bitter. It says you've got to be willing. He says he says, get rid of all bitterness. And it's about your memory. Your life, my life, is all about what we choose to remember. Bottom line. So you've got to be willing to forsake the problem. Secondly, you've got to be willing to forgive the person. Forsake the problem. Forgive the person. Forgiveness does not mean you're friends again. Forgiveness is not minimizing what has been done to you. Forgiveness is simply saying this. I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to give them to God. Vengeance is mine. God says, I will repay. And I'm going to give them to God, and then I'm going to move on with my life. Forgiveness is really for you more than it is for the person or persons that have hurt you because bitterness is what hurts you. Notice what Paul says in verse 32, be kind, compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. That's why I said, forget the problem, forgive the person. Get rid of all bitterness. That means forget the problem. Forgive each other. 
forgive the person. And when you forgive them, listen, you, you probably need to write this down. I'm going to say it slowly. Forgive them freely. If they don't say I'm sorry, forgive them anyway. Forgive them freely. Even if they don't say I'm sorry, even if they don't repent, even if they don't try to repair you, forgive them freely. Forgive them fully. Notice what he says. Get rid of all, all bitterness. Forgive them fully. The whole thing, whatever it is, forgive them fully. And then forgive them finally. I told you yesterday that today you had 24 hours to beat up somebody. Today it's over. It's over. Finally, when I get through with this teaching and have this final prayer, you're going to take that person and give them to God, and you're not going to feed it, give them any energy, and, and give that situation any more energy because you're going to forgive them freely. You're going to forgive them fully. You're going to forgive them finally. So you forget the problem. Get rid of it. You forgive the person. Be kind compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, and then check this out. You forsake the practice. Forsake the practice. Forget the problem. Forgive the person. Forsake the practice. Which means that once you forgive them and move beyond today, you're not coming back to it. You are not coming back to it. Now, how do you you know, how can you prevent your mind from going back to it? Memories don't die. But to be effective and to move beyond a bad memory, memory has to be replaced, which means you have to get new memories. And you're going to get new memories as you move forward. It's not that you have contracted amnesia. It's just that you choose not to dwell on your pain you're going to dwell on your gain. You're not going to dwell on your pain. It's what you dwell on. It's what you feed. And you're not going to dwell on it. You're not going to let anyone else dwell on it. And God's going to look at how you are not dwelling on it. And God's going to say, okay, now I'm going to take you somewhere. I'm going to take you somewhere. Amen. So forget the problem. Forgive the person. Forsake the practice. Move on. Now, let me ask you a question. The series this week has been from being bitter, don't get bitter, get better. Do you know that bitter and better, they sound alike, right? But there's one major difference between bitter and better. Bitter is spelled, well, better is spelled B-E-T-T-E-R, but bitter is spelled B I. T-T-E-R. Because in the word bitter, you find a letter that you don't find in better. And the word bitter is ah, 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 which is to say that I control whether or not I am going to let what has happened make me bitter. It's on you. You must choose, God has given you the power of choice, to be free of what people have done. You have to choose to overcome it by the grace of God so you have a testimony. And then once you choose by the grace of God to become free and overcome it, then you refocus on your dreams, on your future, on what's ahead of you, or as Paul said to the church of Philippi, at Philippi, forgetting those things which are behind you and pressing towards those things which are ahead of you, he says, I press towards the mark of the high calling. Bitterness is a low calling. God has a high calling. Are you pressing towards the low calling, or are you willing to press towards the high calling. God has a high calling on your life. And Paul says, I don't know about you, but I'm going to press towards it. You, your best days are in front of you. 
not behind you. Listen, God can prepare a table before you in the very presence of your enemies. So what the enemies have done for evil, if you don't let bitterness become a root in your heart, God can bless you in the presence of the very people who try to do you damage. And in closing, one of the best ways to overcome bitterness is to do what we're going to do tomorrow, and that's worship. When you worship God, you get an image of God's greatness and God's power. And that image of God's greatness and power will remind you that regardless of what the people have done to make you bitter, that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. God bless you. I hope you've been blessed by this series on bitterness. May God help you to move from being bitter to becoming better. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful week of teaching from your word, practical news we can use and apply to our life. And the Lord, help us to go back over some of these teachings and to incorporate them into our lives. Help us not to become bitter, but help us to become better. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for being with us this week. Tomorrow is Men's Day at St. Stephen Baptist Church. We've never had a year like this. We'll, we'll probably never have a, another men's day like this where we're all kind of, you know, worshiping online and social distancing, but we're still connected. And I want to encourage you to uh, invite people to Men's Day St. Stephen Church. Just maintain the regular routine. Uh, just keep doing what you always done, did before COVID-19 and be with us. The pre-worship experience begins at 9 o'clock. We've got a special guest. You don't want to miss our special guest. And then the worship service begins at 930. We've got all the way from Brooklyn, New York, Pastor Anthony Trufant. He is absolutely amazing. He's, this is the first time he's been at the pulpit of St. Stephen Church. It will not be the last time. You will be blessed by the words coming from Pastor Trufant. God bless you so much. Thank you so much for being a part uh, of uh, these powerful points to ponder. Love you much. God bless you. And in closing, don't forget what we always say. Stay safe. Stay sane. And if you can, stay home. God bless you. See you tomorrow in worship.